Hello everyone, my name is Michael Michael and I am the Senior Director of Product Management at Aprenda. Today, I will be showcasing some of the work of the Kubernetes SIG Windows team and their efforts in integrating Windows Server containers with Kubernetes. Our goal as a SIG has been always to expand the ecosystem of applications supported for Kubernetes and by giving it the ability to run containers on top of Windows Server, we're essentially giving Kubernetes a broader coverage in terms of the types of applications that can run on Kubernetes, and we are making Kubernetes the best cross-platform cluster manager out there. To do that work, we had to leverage investments by Microsoft and Docker in Windows Server containers. Our goal has been to not only incorporate Windows Server containers into Kubernetes, but to also to drive enhancements in Windows networking to satisfy container requirements. Members of the SIG include G2 and Alex Brandt, as well as Cesar Wong from Red Hat. And this has been a collaborative effort across many team members to bring this to fruition. This slide, we're looking at the typical Kubernetes architecture. We're not gonna deep dive into this. We're gonna immediately switch over to look at some of the changes that we've incorporated into Windows Server containers for Kubernetes. The kubectl has remained unchanged and so has the Kubernetes master components. All our work has centered around the kubelet and the kube proxy, which we have enhanced and modified to run on top of the operating system of Windows Server 2016. As you can see here, we can run within a pod one or more containers, including the infrastructure container, and we can run multiple pods inside Docker on a Windows node. In order to enable all this work, we had to make some minor changes both into the kubelet as well as into kube proxy, and that allowed us to schedule Windows Server containers for any type of Windows application, ranging from IIS-based, ASP.NET, .NET Core, and others. The SIG has an existing pull request that is available at the link there for others to try out, review, and comment on our work. In order to enable Kubernetes to run with Windows Server containers, we had to make some tough decisions on our networking. Most importantly, the fact that there is no parity between the Linux pod abstraction and the pod abstraction on Windows, um, and that is because of a limitation where there is no container mode networking in Windows, so that means that containers cannot talk to each other through localhost when they're both containers are in the same pod. In addition to that, there is no ability for to use SDN plugins in Windows. So in order to make all of this possible, um, we have used features like RRAS, as well as routing table manipulation, and the NetSH port proxy to enable us to configure the routing uh, across different pods within the Windows Server environment and to allow us to utilize features of Kubernetes like load balancing, high availability, and so forth. Um, on and so forth. Let's dive into the demo right now. Our demo environment is gonna consist of two Windows Server 2016 nodes, one Linux node with the Kubernetes core components. And for demo, we're gonna utilize a couple of applications like the Guestbook Go application, that's a multi-tier app with a Redis backend also running on Windows. Now be aware that even though all the applications I'm gonna demo today are running on Windows Server, we could create a hybrid environment where you could have pods running on Windows and pods running on Linux, and they could all be part of the same Kubernetes service. So the, the work that we've been doing on the SIG enables you to do just that. So let's switch to our demo here. First, let me describe a little bit my environment. Over here, we're looking at Microsoft Azure, where we have deployed Kubernetes here, and we've used an ARM template that's the Azure Resource Manager to facilitate the deployment of both Kubernetes as well as the Windows Server nodes that are running Windows Server containers and the kubelet. Um, over here, you'll notice that we have our three virtual machines here, um, two on Windows and one on Linux. We have five Ethernet adapters, 
that's two per Windows node. Um, each Windows node requires two, one for the external IP address and one for bridge. And then we have our three public IP addresses, one per virtual machine. Next, you'll notice here we have our Azure KubeNet that is the virtual network that has all the five uh, network interfaces as connected devices. And we also have the route table here. That's a necessary component to facilitate routing the traffic between the different virtual machines for Kubernetes. In a private network deployment, so if you were to deploy Kubernetes within your own infrastructure, you would do the routing inside the virtual machines. In this case, we had to apply the routing uh, from Windows Azure as a component here called the route table. So let's go ahead and look at the virtual machines really quickly. Over here, I have kubewin01, which is one of my virtual machines. You notice I'm running two scripts here. On the left-hand side is the kubelet that is running. On the right-hand side, I'm running the kube proxy. And uh, the kube proxy, in this case, is running um, in user space mode. So a lot of the networking components are, are in, in user space for um, for for Kubernetes. Um, in terms of the networking that we're using within uh, Docker, we're using transparent networking. That means that each container will get its own IP address managed by the container. Uh, if I were to open up here uh, NetSH in proxy show all, you'll see here that I have two routes here defined. These are the routes to the Kubernetes master service IP as well as the DNS service IP. Uh, if I do Docker PS, I'll see that there's no images running, and my Docker images show some of the images that I have already uh, deployed on this virtual machine for use by Docker as well as Kubernetes. So let's go ahead and try deploying some new pods and see what that looks like. Switching here to the Linux machine that is housing all the Kubernetes core components. Let's uh, call get nodes here and see that we have three nodes. The first two are my Windows Server nodes, and the next one is my Linux nodes. So let's go ahead and describe one of my nodes here and see what that, see some of the information in there. So describing the Windows node, if we go up, we'll notice that the operating system is Windows in this case. And all of the rest of the information is standard uh, Kubernetes information that you get for a pod. Go ahead and clear this. So now we're ready to kind of deploy our first service. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and create this multi-tier application called Guestbook, which I mentioned earlier. It, the application has a Redis master, a Redis slave, as well as the Guestbook Go application. All of these components are gonna run on Windows. So let's go ahead and create our master here. And I'm gonna create the master service as well. I'm gonna go come back and describe bo both of these to you. So let's go ahead and create the slave and the slave service. And go ahead and create the controller as well for the guestbook Go application. So let's take a look at what this look like. So let's take, for example, the Redis master controller. Now you notice here that this is a replication controller. It's called the Redis master. And one of the most important things to notice is that the node selector is set to the operating system of Windows. So we're basically telling Kubernetes, go ahead and create this one replica of the Redis master and put it on Windows. If we were to look at the, the slave controller as well, that looks very similar. Again, targeting on Windows, and in this case, we have the Redis slave. Uh, in this case, you notice that I did ask for two replicas, not just one, to have multiple deployments on my, on my pod here. So let's go ahead and, and get pods and see the pods that we have deployed. Now, be aware that I already pre-deployed a, a pod for Blog Engine earlier, just to show that to you guys later on. So, so now we actually have 
both our master and our slave up and running, as well as the guestbook application. And you notice here that the nodes they're running on are the two Windows Server nodes. So now we have a pod that we defined, we made the target selection to go against Windows, and all of that is deployed. I want to do one thing really quickly here. I do want to get the logs and make sure that my master and my slave have synchronized with each other. So let me go ahead and do that really quickly. And I'm going to pick up my, my Redis master here. And it looks like that there's been a full re recent request by the slave. Synchronization with slave succeeded. So now my both my master and my slave are able to talk to each other. So let's go ahead and describe our service here and see what that looks like and see how we can actually connect to it and, and be able to use our application. So we're describing the service here, service called, this was called Guestbook. That's the IP address of the service that we have and the port is 3000. So let's see if we can access it from Windows. And here we are, we have a guestbook application running on Kubernetes uh, on Windows Server. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter a couple of values here. I'm gonna call them demo one, and I'm gonna call them demo two. So now we entered a couple of values here, which are gonna go into the Redis backend. Now, one thing to note is that in this case, we're actually writing to the Redis master, but every time we do a read, we're reading from the Redis slave. So if I were to look at the environment details here, notice, the, most of these are Windows based, as well as some of the environment details that Kubernetes needs, as well as the Redis itself. So we are running on Windows here. And if we were to click on info, we'll see that a lot of our information here around the Redis storage component. So now that we did that, let's go ahead and see if we can scale our front end and see how Kubernetes handles that. So let's go ahead and call the replication controller and set the replica set to three. So now if I come back to my get pods, I will see that my guestbook front end now has scaled and I have two more new containers being created. So that means that if I were to access my application, I should be able to see um, more than one guestbook application. So while that's happening, and that's gonna finish within the next few seconds, oh, it's already done, let's go ahead and see how we can actually invoke that from within uh, a partial script that will showcase the load balancing that Kubernetes is doing. So we'll go ahead and come here, and let's call our script here really quickly. So now what we're gonna do, this script is gonna call that same IP address 10.0.0.164.3000 uh, 20 times. And you'll notice that while that's being called, we're getting the data back, demo one, demo two, which are the data that we enter into our guestbook application, but the container IP address is changing between 213, 72, and 86. So now just by incorporating Windows Server containers into Kubernetes, we were able to leverage a lot of the features of Kubernetes like the node port load balancing, the replication controller, high availability, elasticity, all those features are made available to us just by using Docker and Windows Server containers with Kubernetes. So my app is not just working, but I get advantage of the rich features of the ecosystem. So if I were to refresh here my IP address, you saw my IP address changed to 86 here. And if I do it often enough, uh, besides the stickiness of the browser, I'll be able to get a new container IP. Now, let's exit here out of this and run our pods again one more time. And the IP addresses that you saw earlier for the guestbook are the same IP addresses that are defined here in Kubernetes. Let's do one more thing here. I do want to access my application from externally, so how would that work? So, um, so let's describe our service again one more time here, and I'll notice the different ports 
uh, for my service here. So I have my node port to be 32 for 25. So um, let's see what that looks like from outside. The first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna come to Windows Azure here and I'm gonna click on all my virtual machines. I'm gonna capture its IP address here. And that's the public IP address for my machine. And I'm gonna grab the port that we deployed the machine and that's 32.425. And there you go. Now externally from outside of the Azure environment where I deploy my virtual machines, I'm able to access my guestbook application and that's load balance just the same way that I showed you earlier. Now in terms of the networking, couple of notes here, the networking within Kubernetes for Windows Server is a flat layer three networking. Uh, and like I mentioned earlier, we are using NetSH to do a lot of the port forwarding and the service discovery across the different components of my apps, in this case, Guestbook, uh, is through environment variables. In the future, we do, uh, we'll incorporate the service type of load balancer as well. We just, we're not there yet. So this code here is a very alpha preview of the Windows Server containers. All right, let's switch gears here a little bit. Remember earlier, I did tell you that I went ahead and created uh, a blog engine, which is a .NET application. Um, that's one of the big samples of .NET applications uh, on Docker, and we put that in Kubernetes. So let's go ahead and look at that. So let's look at our pods here. So we have our blog engine pod. So let's go ahead and describe here our service. And you notice that this is running on IP address 249 and port 8000. So let's go ahead and open up a browser here in that page. And there you go. We have blog engine running inside Docker, inside the Windows Server container and exposed through Kubernetes. And I can do things like search here. So I can go ahead and search the word started that I see there. And when I search it, and it's gonna give me welcome to blog engine. So it's a fully functional blog engine with a database running inside a container on Kubernetes. And the last thing I wanna show you is if we did go back to our PowerShell window here on the Windows node, I can run Docker PS and it will show me all the images that are running on Docker in this, in this environment. And you notice that I have the apprentice pause image that's the infrastructure container that gets deployed with each pod. And if we run Docker images, like we saw earlier, that's the different images that we have on the server. So there you go. We have Windows Server, Windows Server containers, and Kubernetes all working together. So let's go back to my presentation here. And in terms of the next steps, um, there's a call to action. So we have both all the sample applications we use today, the Azure ARM template all available on GitHub. We have instructions on how to set up Windows Server for Kubernetes. And the SIG team will continue to push for improvements in Windows uh, container networking, things like native overlay support, container mode networking, and DNS server support are things that, are, uh, that we want to make the Windows experience for Kubernetes to be up to par or parity feature-wise with the Linux one. In terms of the roadmap, the SIG Windows will bring Windows Server container support in beta with Kubernetes version 1.5. So that work has already been started. And if you would like to contribute to that work, come to SIG Windows and help us out. Thank you so much. We appreciate it.